Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Young, welcome. Uh, Ms. Young, do you, do you know what a dollar that you held at the start of the Biden administration is worth today? Uh, I'm sure you, you'll let me know, Senator. <laughs> well, it is a number you should know. It's worth 85 cents. Uh, that is driving an awful lot of the numbers on your budget here. Um, it's causing an awful lot of pain for the American public. Uh, I, I want to kind of pick up where Senator Scott left off without really asking questions. But you take a look at what we were spending prior to the pandemic, about $4.4 .4 trillion. Uh, I personally think in 2020 we spent too much. You know, we, we started talking about the, the CARES Act. It was about $750 billion within a few weeks. That was you know, up to $2.2 trillion. Uh, it wasn't money spent very efficiently. But I think we had to do something fast. We had to do something massive so that markets wouldn't collapse. But after 2020, you know, we had, because we spent another $2 trillion in 2020, we had so much money sloshing around the economy. At, at, at most, I think we were down 25 million jobs for a few months. Uh, within a few months, we were up to about 8 million job losses. But come January 2021, again, so much, so much money sloshing around. There's so much pent-up demand. Those jobs are going to be coming back uh, relatively soon. What do you think sparked the 40-year high inflation? Uh, Senator, we can also talk about inflation that has come down by two-thirds. No, and, again, that and, damage and is done. And I think again, most Again, what, what caused, what sparked 40-year most, most high inflation? Most economists agree that coming out of a global pandemic, which is why we saw inflation across every major economy in this country, it was the, the supply chain issues, uh, economies turning back on, coming out of a once-in-a-generation pandemic, which is why you saw inflation across the globe increase. I mean, you, you don't think that too many dollars chasing too few goods is the primary cause of inflation, and when you spend $2 trillion one year over the next, and then you don't readjust the baseline. I mean, how can you justify spending $4.4 trillion? And as, as Senator Scott was saying, population grew less than 2% over this time frame. So we go from $4.4 trillion to 6.5. 2021, when President Biden comes in, into office, we spend 6.8. And then 6.3. We, we haven't reset to the 2019 baseline. H how are we ever going to recover from this? Senator, we put forth a proposal a way to continue to invest in the American people. If we think we have adequate child care and paid leave in this country, I welcome us to talk to hardworking Americans. We can do that by asking the top one and two percent uh, to add more into the system. That way, we can not only pay for our investments, but we can bring down the deficit no, think, by over $3 trillion. We can't I, just talk about spending as if it only hits those programs that hit working families in this country. I think, it's a, I think it's a fantasy if you make the rich pay their fair share. And by the way, the top 1% uh, garner about 20% of the income, pay about 40% of the income tax. I mean, at some point in time, you have to say, well, that's probably a pretty fair share. Okay? Well, if you had sales Double tax income and local tax, tax they, they pay, pay about 25%. Pay um, but... You know, I remember when a couple hundred billion dollars was like real money. You know, the political uh, process would be all upset if you're running a couple hundred billion dollar year deficit. Your plan to get us out of this, uh, you're, you're running deficits of 1.8, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.6, It never comes down. You're basically locking in at least $1.5 trillion deficits for the next 10 years. That's what you're budgeting. I mean, clearly, this is unsustainable. You don't worry about, once again, sparking massive inflation that further devalues the dollar from a dollar to 85, what dollar is going to go down to 70 to 60? The Senator, absolutely. That is why we put forth a plan that would actually bring deficits down by $3 trillion. We care about our fiscal path. This president has shown how you can still invest in the American people and achieve deficit reduction. And by the way, he worked with Republicans to sign a fiscal responsibility act that would save a trillion dollars on our deficit. So you're proud of a 10-year budget 
that never reduces the deficit, never brings it down below basically 1.5 trillion. Senator, you're, of you're, you're proud, proud of that of a, work. Of course, I'm proud of a budget that reduces deficits by over three trillion dollars. That continues its investments in the American people. And by the way, most economists will tell you the way to look at our affordability of debt is to look at debt and deficit as a percentage of GDP. Uh, as, as a percentage of GDP, deficits are w below 4.5 percent. I, I don't Real think. I don't think. I don't think average Americans take a look at at least $1.5 trillion deficits as far as the eye can see and think this administration is bringing down the deficit. I mean, that's just fantasy talk. Thank you. Senator Kane, followed by